Pedro from EMP Reacts. I'm here today with Erlen Jelvik to talk about the five bands that have influenced him the most. How's it going? Pretty good. Uh, as good as anyone can do these days, I would say. So I can't complain. Well, first of all, I want to th say thank you for you taking the time to chat with me. We haven't talked since your album came out, so I've been looking forward to finding a reason to bring you back on the <laughs> channel for us to talk. Uh, yeah. Because I really enjoy talking to you about music, talking to you about your music. So today we're going to dive a little bit deeper into your roots. So Sounds great. So before we talk about the five bands that really uh, played a huge role in the music that you're making today, let's go back a little bit. Where did it all started for you? How old were you when you discovered metal or, or heavy music, whatever you want to call it? Yeah, um, I think for me, like the first metal band I got into, uh, it's probably the same case for a lot of people out there, but the first band I got into was uh, Metallica, which was like a, a big thing uh, at school, like all the boys in, the, in my class listened to it. Mm -hmm. I think especially like the load and reload albums were really popular at the time when I started getting into them. And then I started working my way backwards uh, to their older albums, like, you know, Discovered Master of Puppets and Ride the Lightning and Kill Em All eventually. So, yeah, so that was the first metal band I got into. And then new metal happened. I got into Slipknot. That was like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I discovered those guys when I was 15 and was pretty blown away by that band and was a big fan for a few years and then like around the same time maybe like when i was 16 or something i got into bands like demi borger and satiricon and dark throne and it just kind of snowballed from there so did you once you start getting into that music uh with, with metallica being your gateway drug if you will into heavier music was there an appeal of a specific instrument? Did you gravitate towards the guitar, towards the bass, drums? Was there something that appealed to you? Yeah, uh, for me, I would say it's uh, the vocals that I probably would gravitate towards the most. And that's probably why I ended up singing myself. But before that, I used to play, uh, take piano lessons and keyboard lessons and stuff like that. And I played keyboard in the band from when I was 12. and. We would do like uh, everything from Metallica covers to Roy Orbison, and that, that kind of stuff. It was kind of like a weird mix that was all over the place. But uh, uh, yeah, so I just gravitated towards the vocals, and especially like with the band that I mentioned, like Slipknot and like black metal bands. I think that really uh, drew me. Was like the most captivating thing for me was the how like the screaming vocals and made me want to do it myself. And then I started practicing when I was working as a cowboy milking, or it's called cowboy, but uh, milking cows on the farm, because then I could be all the, all by myself, and yeah, it was pretty noisy, so I could practice uh, that way before, you know, starting a band of singing like that. I was going to ask you if you did it in your bedroom, you know what I mean, like grabbing <laughs> a comb or a remote control and, and pretending you're in front of a large audience. No, no, I, I kept it to the barn because that was the <laughs> most private place to do it and the cows didn't mind. So Yeah, they didn't care. The cows didn't mind. No, they, they were pretty good uh, singers themselves. <laughs> yeah. Well, when, once your parents start to see you getting involved in, in, with music that's a little bit heavier, a little bit more aggressive, did they have anything to say? Were, were, were they worried about you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh... My dad's a priest and, you know, like, I guess uh, it was pretty recently that the whole uh, black metal movement uh, was happening, uh, you know, because that was in the 90s and I was like seven, eight years old when that was happening. Um, so I don't think, uh, you know, they liked that I got into metal because they had that kind of stuff fresh in their mind. but. Uh, yeah, luckily I had an older brother who kind of did a lot of the legwork for me in terms of uh, desensitizing them to having a son that listens to metal. So, yeah. Yeah. He, he, he paved the road for you. Yeah, he was mostly into grunge, but he showed me some uh, metal bands too. And I remember there was one black metal band he showed me. I can't remember the name, but it was like eight years old and they would like put headphones on me and don't tell mom and dad. But... <laughs> <laughs> uh... yeah. 
Uh, oh, good. How, good how, <laughs> how much time did you spend with the cow singing before you kind of figure it out that this is maybe your path? Like you want to be a musician? Yeah, I. That's a hard question to answer. I never thought about it like as a career path. It's just something I really like doing. So I just kept at it. I. I was always like trying to get bands together and then I scrambled up a bunch of guys in uh, my hometown to play in a band with me where I could sing like after practicing in the barn for I don't know how long, probably not that long. <laughs> so so we had a band that was called Abaddon where I sang and uh, a few other guys from a village and uh, Bjarte from school that who I also started the Queller Talk with a few years uh, later on in Stavanger. So that was my first like band like that where I was singing and then Queller Talk was the second one that we started in Stavanger a couple of years later. So, And, and the rest is history. Uh, yeah, the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you already mentioned one of the bands that played a huge role as far as in, an influence is concerned, and, and it's not Metallica. So like for those expecting now for you to say like Metallica played a huge role uh, as far as the music that you're creating today, it's not the case. And by the way, you made me feel really old by saying that you started with Load and Reload because I started <laughs> with Justice for All. <laughs> so yeah. You're making me feel really old. But uh, the <laughs> band that I was going to say is Demo Borgir. So uh, how old were you when you discovered Demo Borgir? Yeah, uh, it was right when that uh, puritanical, misanthropic Euphoria album came out. Like, I remember reading about it in the newspapers and then going to buy it. <laughs> like, right after I read a review about it and seeing that cover with the computer naked lady with the barbed wire or whatever. So, uh, yeah, that album was mind-blowing to me. And that was the first one I heard by them. And then I got into, yeah, Enthroned the Darkness Triumphant was the second album I bought by them. And then... Yeah, I just got into the other stuff, and I remember buying like a live DVD by them too, which I watched pretty re religiously, like every morning before going to school for like, I don't know, a year or two. <laughs> what was it about Demo Borgir specifically that really appealed to you? Was it was it the symphonic side of their black metal sound? Yeah, um, I think definitely the melodies and the symphonic parts like it's just so huge and bombastic like it's really yeah it's really over the top and it, you know it doesn't get like more grandiose than that but yeah I, I just think it's really great metal and especially those albums uh, like the one we talked about uh, uh misanthropic uh per, it's hard to remember their album's titles <laughs> Uh, puritanical misanthropic euphoria like i really like that one is and also i really like the vocals of uh both shagrat and uh, vortex i just think that was like a really good mix and yeah so that album was just the uh, yeah i listened <laughs> i listened to it so much was it was a perfect record for you musically and vocally yeah i would say so uh, another band that, that you have on your list that that didn't surprise me that's on your list, uh, it's Immortal. I, I think they're a band that has influenced so many different people, uh, even outside of black metal. It's just such an influential band. Uh, when was the discovery of Immortal? Was it early on as well? No, it was around the same time. Like I was, yeah, I would say I was 16 and 17 when I was uh, getting into all of these bands. Like once you discover one, then it kind of just... Yeah. It's branches out to the other ones yeah because you i don't know i would read the interviews and then you hear about these other bands and it just kind of picks up from there uh so yeah immortal the first album i got into by them was uh sons of northern darkness and i think it's still my favorite immortal album like it's uh yeah, it's just a great collection of songs, and it just the way it starts out with one by one is just the uh, it's just like a steamroller. And I got to see them live pretty uh, shortly after that too at the Roskilde Festival, and I was seventeen or eighteen years old when I went to see them there, and it was just um, mind blowing seeing them live with the uh, pyro and 
yeah, I would just say it was probably peak Immortal the time I got to see them, which was like 2002 or yeah, I think it was 2002 or three. I was going to say you saw them really at their peak. Yeah, yeah. So I'm really happy I got to experience that. Like it was just mind blowing. Like it was an electric show, and even like I remember watching the sound check and Abbott just coming out there and like playing little cover songs and singing or whatever like i just thought that was awesome too just the sound check part before the actual show started be being a fan of the band and, and having the band be such an impact on on the music that you're creating today with yelvik uh how did you feel about it when he left the band did you feel like this is it like you know uh regardless of what happens from now on it's never going to be the same immortal yeah uh I guess it wasn't long before he started his own band, Abbott, so... Yeah, I don't know. Like, uh, at the time, I was probably so busy with my own band, Killer Talk. Uh, this was probably, like, in 2000... Uh, when did he leave? Was it, like, 2012 or something like that? I'm yeah, not totally sure. 11, 11 or 12, around that time. Yeah, I was so <laughs> busy with my own band at the time, so I don't think I thought much about it, but I was... Yeah, I'm really happy to hear that he started his own band, Abbott, and I really think that's a great band, too. I really like the latest album, especially, and also the first one, which has uh, inspired me to hire Kevin Foley as a drummer, because he there plays drums on the first one, yeah. It, 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 life is going full circle for you. <laughs> yeah, I take uh, more than inspiration from uh, <laughs> <Abbott>. <laughs> more way more than just inspiration as far as that goes yeah but it's just uh, one of those bands like you know it's you can't really just call it a black metal band i think it's like just a lot more than that too like uh, i just think it has like uh, this uh, sense of grandness to it and like epic uh, riffs going on and it's just that's like a heroic feel, especially the later albums. And I really like the old albums too. Like the first one I think is awesome. And yeah, the, all the put and produced albums really, the first few ones, so. Uh, moving good. on to another band, let's let's tackle Dissection. I mean, these these guys are absolutely iconic. I mean, both Demo Borg, Gear Immortal are, are iconic, but Dissection has, uh, they just have this aura to them. Mm -hmm. Uh, what is it about their sound, the music that they created, that that you see reflected on your own music? Oh, that's a good uh, question. Um, I think the intensity of it, like you can tell uh, that Jun, that right, like he really means what he's singing and believes in it, and like especially on the last album, Rain Chaos, like. This is like pretty shortly before he kills himself to go hang out with uh, space demons or <laughs> whatever he believed in. Because it was, he, yeah, he was a member of this uh, anti cosmic uh, order or whatever. I don't totally remember what the gist of it is. But uh, it really like comes through in the lyrics and the way he sings. Like this, it's not, yeah, he's not faking it. It's, it's something he 100% believes in. So I didn't, yeah. Talking about this album, I remember it came out and I was kind of disappointed because I really was expecting like Storm of the Light Spain uh, number two, <laughs> number two or something yeah. like that. And then it was kind of taken uh, by surprise when it kind of sounded like it was some sort of like an In Flames album or something like that. Uh, so it took me a long time to appreciate that album, but like, yeah, later on it just really grew on me and uh, yeah, I think it's probably one of their best albums, I would say. Do, do you think that Dissection is a band that has an aura, but that aura is not just because of the music they've created, it's also because of the story associated with the band and everything that has happened? You, you think it's yeah. hard for fans to differentiate between one and the other? Well, I think it kind of... It goes a little bit hand in hand because, uh, like I said, this is a guy who really believes in what he's singing about. And I think it, that kind of energy comes through the music and you can feel it. And, you know, so it kind of comes with the territory that someone who believes in all kinds of stuff like this has 
crazy stuff going on in his uh, personal life. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it's and, and then transports itself to the music, to the art that they're creating for sure. Yeah, and then it creates. Uh, yeah, there's some excellent music that can come out of that uh, sort of energy. I think. Uh, in the same case with uh, a lot of the black metal bands. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's an important aspect, for me at least, I gravitate towards music that I feel like the person who's singing that music feels what they're singing about. Otherwise, th there's a clear disconnect and it, and it comes across and, and it's not as truthful. And because it's not as truthful, it doesn't have the same impact. Yeah, I just think you can kind of pick up on it on like a subconscious level, whether someone's being sincere or not. So at least that's how it feels for me. Like I can tell pretty much right away if someone's uh, performing music with conviction so and uh, if it's not then i kind of don't just you turn it off in one ear and out the other so, yeah. <laughs> i i I'm, I'm pretty much the same way i com i completely tune it off it just seems very fake to me as it's going through my ears and then mm -hmm. i just kind of walk away from it immediately it becomes very forgetful like you just don't remember what you listen to yeah i agree so yeah uh, another band on your list is Bathory. Uh, I mean, these are some of the biggest iconic bands in the black metal world. I'm perhaps leaving one of the biggest ones for last, but Bathory, what, what did appeal to you? Was it the, their lyrical content? Was it the sound? Was it everything up fr from the above? Yeah, everything of the above. Um... I think it's both the best black metal band and Viking metal band uh yeah in existence and he was like an originator in both black metal and viking metal so i think that's insane that he pioneered both of those uh styles and do you see them as the, so as the real viking metal originators because I, I mean there's a lot of people that call themselves viking metal these days but i i, yeah. I don't see them having that same um that same aura as bathory did no, I yeah, I would say they're the originators. I know, you know, like his Viking metal or Quartan's Viking metal style was really inspired by Man of War, uh, and Man of War had like some sort of song or a few songs about Norse mythology, and that are kind of like the same sort of style. But uh, yeah, I just think he put his own spin on uh, Viking metal and fusing it with black metal, like on the uh, blood fire death it's just uh yeah like that song uh odin's ride over northland like that intro it just gives me goosebumps uh with the horses uh, whinnying and it's just so the atmosphere feels like you're in the viking age and you're gonna go into some huge battle <laughs> battle yeah yeah it's yeah. The, the energy it, tra it, it transports you into the song it makes you feel like you're not just listening to a song you're living the song yeah i I think it's some of the best shit ever, and it's really inspiring for the stuff that I'm doing uh, these days. So, yeah. Uh, actually, I have to credit Dimmu Borgir for getting into Bath Ray too, because it's like one. I remember they did a cover song. Uh, I think it was Satan, My Master. It's like something that was unreleased by Bath Ray or something, but that's what made me want to check out Bath Ray to begin oh, with. Oh, so that's how it happened? So, Dimmu Borgir was your gateway? <laughs> yeah, my Dimmu Borgir was the gateway black metal band, so yeah, I'm not hiding that. Uh, the, the last band on your list is Dark Throne. I mean, it doesn't perhaps get more iconic than, than this band uh, yeah. in terms of what they've meant for black metal and Norwegian black metal. Uh, how was your experience with Dark Throne? They've been with me uh, a really long time, like these other bands, yeah. Again, around 16, 17, I got into them. Uh, and yeah, I started with Transylvanian. Uh, no, actually, Under a Funeral Moon. That's the first album I got by them. And it's like at first I was kind of like, OK, this production is really lo-fi. And I was kind of uh, struggling a little bit with getting into it. But then suddenly it's just, yeah, clicked with me. It and, clicks. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, especially like as a teenager, you're kind of used to a certain type of production, especially with a few of the bands that I mentioned already uh, earlier on. So it's kind of like you have to take the kind of step to start appreciating like a lo-fi production, too. And yeah, no, it's just it's one of my favorite bands 
Dark Throne, I'm, I love how consistent they are. And, like, they have so many albums and they keep constantly evolving, but it's... Yeah, I think everything they do is great, really. I can't think of... Maybe, like, the only album I don't like by them is, like, Plague Wilder. It's just... It's not that I don't like it, it just kind of doesn't really connect with me, but... I love their, like, uh, metal punk uh, face, and uh, I like the new stuff that they're doing that's a little more doomish, and... Yeah. It's all really good. Now, when you look at these five bands, Bathory, Demo Borgir, Immortal, Dissection, Dark Throne, and you look at your, your own sound, your own creation with the Elvin, which of these bands do you feel like you come closer to as far as the sound is concerned, and which band do you come closer to as far as the vocals go? Yeah, uh, I steal like bits and pieces from everything, so it's kind of hard to give like a clear-cut answer there, but... Uh... Uh, recently, I feel like I've been <laughs> I've been working on music, and it's I keep thinking like, oh, this kind of sounds like dissection-ish, and, uh, and then other times I work on stuff, and it's like, okay, this is more like a bathory feel I'm getting from this. So, so either dissection or bathory, I would say. And this, yeah, immortal too comes up a lot for me. So, as far as your vocals go, which one do you feel like you're closest with? Yeah, um, let me think about that. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. They all have their like own really unique style, so style, it's hard yeah. to like choose one. I'm probably leaning towards the bathory type of sound. I I get I know like his kind of clean singing, uh, Corton's clean singing isn't everyone's cup of tea, but like I really enjoy the sincerity of it. <laughs> I think it sounds great then. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll try some clean singing myself at some point soon. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in the next record, which actually, that, that, that brings me to my last question for you today is, uh, as we're talking about bands that influence you, and, and as you look back at your debut record, perhaps looking forward to the next album, uh, is the next album in the works? Yeah, I, I'm working on it. Uh, music's uh, being written in all the time that we have off now, so I'm spending my time wisely working on new stuff. So, so lots of great stuff co uh, coming down the pipeline. Oh, that's exciting! Uh, the yeah. the debut record was phenomenal. So, thank you. Uh, which which leaves everybody waiting for the the follow up, even with with more anticipation. Yeah, it will be even better. So. Wow, that's that's you. You know, you you set the bar, and now you move the bar a little bit higher. Yeah, you know, I feel a little more confident now, and I got some a lot of good experience working on the first album, and I'm putting all those things that I learned to good use, and yeah, just really having a good time uh, writing music uh, these days. So I look forward to when I can share more details and let the music uh, come out. Let the music speak for itself. Uh, yeah. th thank you very much, Erlen, for, for your time today, man. I really appreciate it. You too. I'm a, I'm a big fan of yours. I'm a big fan of your music, and I love that debut record. So uh, I'll be looking forward with anticipation for the next album. Yeah, thank you so much. It was a pleasure to be on your show again. I love talking to you too. I had a blast. Thank you. Take care. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.